It's Carl from now, and you're watching Horns Up Rocks. We're backstage at BB Kings here in New York City. I'm here with Carl from Nile. How are you, brother? Doing great. How about you? Good, great. Celebrating this with all the metal family all around the country has been the tour so far. And what did you decide to involve all the local openers throughout the, all the different markets? Oh uh, well, so far so good. I've uh, been having a blast. Uh, a lot of uh, metal fans are turning up to these shows. Uh, in fact, it's going better than we had hoped. Uh, we wanted to include the local bands because I noticed over the last few years with the proliferation of package tours that there weren't so many opportunities for local bands to play. And local bands are the future of metal. I mean, you know, this is the next generation. If we start cutting out the next generation, where the fuck will metal be in 10 years? So, um, I thought, you know, this is something someone should care about. So, yeah, this is what we did. And how was the, how was the process? Did you guys get, like, were you getting involved in, like, selecting the bands? Um, no, we, we realized that if we were going to have 30 shows and three bands at each show the the math is very easy that's 90 bands um that's more bands than i have time to pick so we went with the much wiser course of letting the local promoters pick the bands because they know the area they know the bands they know which bands are are working hard and willing to hustle and bring uh people out to the shows fuck yeah let's talk about your set i know you're doing something pretty aggressive but it's something that you're used to always kind of pushing the envelope because it's not easy to be doing especially a very very underground genre like death metal for all these years and being prevalent yeah it's uh it's a tough mountain to climb you know but uh i think death metal is founded on a lot of nietzschean philosophy you know what does not kill you makes you stronger and let's talk about, you know, about the sun selection and the set list selection. So many songs, so many records, it's hard to pick. <laughs> uh, it's very hard to pick, which it was the genesis of the idea to do two sets, was so many fans would ask for songs uh, that we wanted to play ourselves, but restrictions of a normal tour and, you know, an hour set length uh, limitation meant, you know, we couldn't play a lot of songs that fans wanted to hear, so... We scratched our heads for a long time and went, what are we supposed to do with this? Well, we're just going to have to break down and play two sets. So uh, we, uh, we met with a lot of resistance initially from management and the booking agent, but we won our case eventually. Yeah, We helped them see the light. And obviously the fans are responding, which is great, because of course is it a risk? it's a risk for all involved to kind of be like, okay, we're going to be not only doing two sets of our band, but we're also only going to be playing with local openers, so that's kind of like a double whammy. Right, but one benefit to this approach that I initially saw uh, was we could keep ticket prices low. Another uh, thing from the big package tours also comes with the big ticket price. And that cuts out a lot of the metal younger audience right there. If you got a $45 ticket, you know, come on. Ticket prices for this tour in every market are less than $20. Um, so there's no reason not to come out, have a couple beers, see some metal, see all your friends. Yeah. Now, obviously, Carl, you've been doing this for a long time. Um, what have you seen in the evolution of death metal? How do you feel it is today, how it stands? I know, obviously, you're very active, not only when you're in the studio, but also seeing you know what's out there as far as like your fellow you know, upcoming bands and, of course, the established bands. So how do you feel about the state of death metal today in 2013? Well, it's constantly evolving and devolving all at the same time. Um, the one constant is change. Uh, there are some bands doing amazing things, and there are bands doing complete bullshit things. Um, but in this day and age of the internet, it's easier to dig out those amazing little bands that you, no one's ever heard of, and you can check them out on, on the, you know, YouTube or on uh, Facebook. Yeah, so that part, that's pretty fucking cool. On the other hand, bands don't have uh, a lot of time 
to develop their craft. Um, when we were starting out um, in the way back years before the internet, um, there was a circuit you could play, you know, if you were a, an unsigned band, and you could play enough and get on enough shows to where you could develop your skills and hone your craft, your songwriting, your, your stage work. And there was time to, to learn and grow. But now in this age of instant uh, exposure with the internet, young bands are like thrown out there with the wolves. You're competing on the internet with the entire range of bands, you know, from seasoned professionals to utter beginners. And that's it's not necessarily nurturing to younger talent. Very well put. Hey, let's talk about your new model guitars. I know you've obviously been with Dean for a long time. You were just in that presenting a bunch of new models. So let's talk about that. Because obviously they've been good to you and they've been so good to our genre, yeah. period. Yeah, the Dean guys are wonderful. Great guys. Um, right now I'm playing a, a Dean USA V. It's a seven-string model, neck through. Um, there's no volume knobs. There's no tone knobs. Uh, the pickups are wired straight through. Um, I'm really fond of that. It's uh, not only aesthetically pleasing because you don't have to fuck up some nice wood to stick some knobs on there, but it sounds better. Yeah, without the extra stuff in the circuit, uh, the signal's hotter and cleaner and more pure. Was that your idea? Well, I can't take credit for it being totally my idea. I, I think I heard about somebody else doing it way back. I can't remember who it was. Nobody famous. And I went, you know, that's, that's a pretty good idea. And I tried it, and I loved it. And starting out, who were the guys you were watching and kind of saying, you know, I want to do that? Uh, you know, probably a lot of the same influences other young players had at the time. Uh, Tony Iommi, uh, Clapton. Jeff Beck. Uh, I was very fond of Richie Blackmore and Ulrich Roth. Yeah, very inspirational stuff. Billy Gibbons, Robin Trower. Yeah, classic stuff. They just took it to the extreme? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think that's one of the things uh, uh, an educated listen to the catalog of Nile would reveal is it's those influences, but taken to a very extreme level. You can still hear it. I still hear it. Yeah. And how's been the response of the public? Because you've been playing at the Gato Cedar for a while now. How's been the response so far when you play the new songs for that record? Um, actually, better than we had hoped. Uh, the album got mixed reviews. Um, but live, the songs take on a new meaning. Um, you know, some of the complaints about the record was, you know, people didn't like the, the thinner, cleaner production. Uh, but live, you know, it's huge and fat and thick and monstrous. Um, I read uh, some people were saying, this is how these songs were meant to be. Yeah. Um, we played this show in Moscow, which was the first place we played uh, enduring the eternal molestation of flame. And it's a very challenging song to play live. And when we got to the end of it, the uh, the Moscow audience was so appreciative and the applause that we got was different from any other songs it was a very respectful honorable kind of recognition I was like wow okay um, we're also playing the supreme humanism of megalomania that seems to go over really well it's got a really driving kind of beat and uh, the inevitable degradation of flesh seems to get everybody going yeah, so the the live songs are working out really well. I'm I'm really happy about that. And from all these years you've been doing this, what is the hardest lesson you've learned as far as the music business? Uh, that you can never let your guard down. As soon as you let your guard down, some monkey with a camera will catch you brushing your teeth or combing your hair or trying to eat a peanut butter jelly sandwich or whatever. Yeah. You can never let your guard down. And it, it applies further than that. Uh, you know, you've always got to look out for the stuff you didn't necessarily think about because that's where you fall. And that, that makes it tough. You know, you always got to be on your toes. You always got to be aware of what's going on and who's looking to exploit you and who's looking to do you a favor. But sometimes they look like the same guy. 
you know, it's it's tough to tell. So you would say that it's it took you a while at the beginning, especially to kind of collect your team of people that you can kind of say trust and kind of build up with? You know, trust is, uh, you know, like Tony Montana says, you know, trust and loyalty. That's all you got. That's all you, you got to trust your teammates. You got to trust your band members. You have to function as a team. And uh, it's tough to find band members that are made of the right stuff. Uh, right now, we got a really solid team. I'm really happy. Um, and we're working really good together. And before we got out here, you remember the first concert you ever went to? <laughs> uh, first concert I ever went to? Um, Santana. And uh, it was a little park just uh, south of San Jose, about 1972 or so. Yeah. Did you buy a, a tour T-shirt that day? No, no, no. My mom didn't have enough money for that. She had enough money to get my ticket, but not enough money to get me a T-shirt. So what was your first band T-shirt? My first band T-shirt? Probably Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah, the, the one with the swan song looking guy, you know, flying with the wings. Yeah, had that for years. Any final words for the Nile fans watching right now? <laughs> Come out to see us on this tour. There's no reason not to come out. Ticket prices are low. We're playing two sets of Nile Classics going all the way back to the beginning of our career. Come out and join us. Have some fun. Definitely don't forget to pick up a gate of season. When you're at the show, pick up some merch, tip your bartenders. Always support the scene. And it's very cool, as I said before, that you're supporting the local bands. We, Hornstar Rocks, especially here in the New York area, also push a lot of the local acts because, as you said, that's the future of music and it's kind of... Uh, Ironic when bands or promoters or even people in our business kind of ignore the local acts coming up because that's the future. It is. It's a shame. It's a damn dirty shame. I have a great show tonight. <laughs> cool. a lot, man. Yeah. yeah.